uh, here actually Friday night and uh, doing a little bit of extra bonus because I didn't get to this question the other day. Um, and I got a question from Michael here on Facebook and he was thanking me so much for uh, getting him into KNF and helping him share the love in um, North Carolina, getting the tomatoes together, which it's always it's always great to see, you know, people around the country, around the world getting into KNF. Um, but got four questions here from Michael. Uh, so I wanted to jump into those and just as a little bonus session, um, get, get you these answers this week. So um, he's asking, what is the role of fish amino acids in IMO? Um, and he's saying that fish amino acid is not mentioned as a component in the soil formulation in the KNF app, nor does um, Chris Trump list FAA in his IMO videos. However, he has seen FAA listed as a component in the IMO solution from other KNF practitioners. In his experience so far, his IMO three piles tend to heat up faster, stay hotter longer than his IMO four and five piles. Um, my feeling is that FAA could be incorporated into IMO four, and he's also curious if FAA could be used to prime the hard cooked rice for IMO one. So uh, to answer that, um, we you know I haven't Master Cho's original formulas. Those um, things you mentioned in the app are directly from um, Master Han Kyu Cho. And so he does not recommend putting FAA in the beginning. Um, now, what I have a caveat to that, and it depends because Master Cho is using um, rice mill run. And here in America, we kind of switch that to um, wheat mill run and or sometimes I do uh, my substrate being um, dog food and um, wood chips. And sometimes I use horse feed. I use a bunch of different things to make my medium up to make my uh, my IMO3. Um, so it depends a lot on what you're using. Now, FAA, I call it uh, KNF fuel. And the reason is, is that it adds fuel to the fire. So like you say, if you do add it into IMO4, if you're not getting these cook-off conditions where it seems a little laggy and it seems like, you know, you're burning a fire there, but it's not quite getting to the heats and the things you want, um, then yeah, go ahead and add fish amino acid in at 1 to 1,000. Add some of that can of fuel. Add that stuff that's going to kick kick off your um, your IMO pile because you do want to get those to a certain amount of heat. And what the fuel, the KNF fuel that FAA provides is that DNA for that rapid uh, microbial boost and to to grow. So do add that in if, if you feel that it's called for. Um, it's not standardly called for because of the ingredients we're using are tend to be rich already and have that fuel that they need. And one thing to be careful of is, you know, if you add too much fuel to a fire and it blows up in your face and overheats and cooks off too fast, it could be something that causes problems for you. So do be careful with adding fish amino acid in. But if you think if you feel like your piles need it, go for it. Um, you know, it's it's not something that I'm discouraging. I'm just encouraging to be careful while while doing it. Um, and then your other, the last bit of this question you're asking, should the IMO be used or should FAA be used to prime the hard cooked rice for IMO one? And that's something I'd highly discourage. Um, you don't really want to um, have these huge, like you don't, you don't want to mess with that process. Actually having the rice is less nutritious than other things and having that less nutritious um, starch, just starch available, you really want to be careful on what microbes you're catching and how you're doing it. So I'd, I'd advise against putting the FAA into your hard cooked rice to collect IMO1. So second question you got, uh, Michael, here is uh, what are your thoughts on water soluble potassium, WK, and water soluble phosphoric acid, WPA? They're mentioned in Master Cho's books but are not widely talked about. Um, and he says he has the materials nearby to make both solutions. Um, so as Johnny answered here in the Facebook uh, question where this was asked, that um, it's the water-soluble potassium and water-soluble phosphoric acid are not part of the nine core solutions. 
because there are more advanced natural farming recipes. Now, however, if you do go into Master Cho's advanced um, studies and you start to get into nutrient uh, theory, you will find that they are mentioned there and they're used very specifically um, to assist in um, both the, the water-soluble phosphoric acid helps in the flowering period and the differentiation, what Master Cho would call the changeover period. And then the water-soluble potassium is used in the ripening phase and also once your plants are fruiting. However, these two things, um, if you're using good fish amino acid, or excuse me, if you're using good fermented plant juices, you're using good can of foods, a lot of these are already incorporated in. And adding them specifically is, um, you know, once, if, if you've mastered the basics and you're already doing the basics and you're already getting amazing results with CANF and, and the, the nine core solutions and those combined into the seven common formulas, then go ahead and you want to take to the next level, then get into the water-soluble potassium, water-soluble phosphoric acid. Um, a lot of the reasons and the times I don't talk about it is because that a lot of times most people aren't even up to the basics and wanting to uh, make it so that, you know, you're covering your bases, you're getting the, the basic things down. And if you're doing that and you're already thriving, then yeah, sure, go ahead and mix these things in. But it's one more thing for most people to make. It's one more complexity. And the other thing is that once you start adding in the water-soluble phosphoric acid and the water-soluble potassium is you can then start to cause imbalance. And so a lot of times I talk about natural farming, I talk about the balance, talk about bringing these things in. And um, just these other solutions, they're, they're great when you know how to use them and when you're at that level and you're ready and you, you can do it, um, do it. But don't you know like but they can cause problems so if you're using them incorrectly they can cause more problems than they help with typically um so just just again just like i was talking in the previous re recipe um use use your discretion and um, bring those things in as an advanced practitioner but be careful that you don't overdo it and um, cause problems just like the faa could cause problems so the third question here, um, are Jadam style anaerobes compatible with IMO 4-5? I'm specifically thinking of um, Jadam microbe solution with tomato and Jadam liquid fertilizer. Um, so this, this is a great question. You know, a lot of people often want to say, um, you know, are the nine core solutions and the um, Jadam my microbial solutions from Master Cho's son, are they compatible? Um, you know, a lot of them, what I, what I say is, um, is use the Jadam microbe solutions to get started. They're simple, they're easy, and they're kind of disgusting. But um, be careful, uh, you know, what you're growing when you use them, when you spray, and eventually graduate up to Master Cho. Um, you know, Young Song Cho is kind of like, um, you know, he describes himself as pop music whereas Master Cho is more um, harmonious, like a symphony. And so they're both music. They can both get things done. But try to, you know, if you can, work your way up to Master Cho's recipes, do those things. They're much more sophisticated, much more cultured, much more um, compatible with everything we're doing. So not to say they're incompatible, but I usually start with Master, or with Cho Young Song, with the Jadam solutions on things that I'm starting fresh and then try to get to master chose by making teas, these ferments, these things that are much more refined. Um, so ho hopefully that works. It helps you out, you know, um, master or young song Cho is very approachable. Whereas master Cho uh, is much more complex to get there. So, um, the fourth question here is do photosynthetic microbes, um, purple non-sulfur bacteria have a role in KNF or natural farming in general. And in the last office hours, I was talking about EM, I was talking about yeast, I was talking about lactobacillus. I did not talk about purple non-sulfur bacteria, um, but those are pretty easy to culture. Um, taking water from like a, a lake, a pond, or, you know, even a puddle, and then um, starting to culture those, you can get um, purple non-sulfur bacteria to grow do they have a role in natural farming in particular? Um, you know, they they tend to be almost present if you're doing good KNF. 
One thing that can be a problematic is if you're using things like EM or you're using purple non-sulfur bacteria specifically, is those take food from your indigenous microbes. Um, they also can um, take, um, you know, it, it's kind of overkill in a, in a lot of ways. They're, they're good in EM, they're, you know, they've been cultured that way. But um, do they have a specific role? You know, they're, they're in your environment. So if you're doing KNF, you're going to have these guys. They're more of like a, a byproduct than they are of a primary thing. And if you're trying to put them there as a primary thing, the IMO are going to outcompete them in the long run. So you're, you know, you're always going to have to apply them. Not to say they don't have a place. I love EM. It's good stuff. But I try to go with the indigenous microbes and these these sort of collections as as what I'm trying to achieve in the end result. So had another question here from Hamud, and he's saying uh, he's asking about what to feed layer chickens from the day old chicks, and when do we start to feed them starter feed? Is that at day ten? Since the first ten days they eat brown rice, and so I want to answer this question here. Um, I've actually been working on this a lot, um, going through. If you watch my advanced chicken videos. Um, but the brown rice is from day 0 to day 21, okay? Then on day 4, you want to start introducing um, shredded boiled eggs. So that's boil an entire egg and then run it through um, like a, a cheese grater or a sieve to make it really, really, really fine particles. And you introduce that to the chickens from day um, 4 to day 10. Then... Um, after that, and at, and at that point, you start to introduce um, the feed to them, but but very small quantities. Then from day four to day 21, you're also going to start introducing finely chopped bamboo leaves. Um, so the feeding for them, uh, you want to, by day 11, you really want to start increasing your feed for them because you're no longer going to have that egg, that shredded egg for them. Um, so I, it, it may seem a little bit complex, but basically you give them brown rice from day 0 to 21, then small egg from day 4 to 10, and then the bamboo from day 4 to 21, okay? And then the food is just introduced to them slowly. If you watch you watch my advanced chicken feed you'll see we go into the chicken um, the raising the baby chicks um, and they get this feed so hopefully I'll have that more clear in an infographic and um, I'm working a lot on the chickens right now if you just saw my feeder video come out um, and been trying to get more of this word out because I realize how vital it is to do livestock especially for myself been raising chickens for almost a, a decade now and when you do these types of feedings, the chicks come out strong. They also develop really strong intestines. They, they get more feed out of it in the long run. And you also tune them to eat wild grass, which is just a vital component of Korean natural farming and can save you a lot of cost in the long run. So switch back here. We got a couple more questions from Michael. Um, and then... Uh, so he's asking, how can biochar be optimized during the IMO 3 through 5 process? He started adding uncharged biochar during the IMO 4 stage. Can it use, be used effectively with IMO 3 or 5? And does charging it before mixing it matter at all? So um, adding biochar in during the 4 stage, the 5 stage, those are great times to do it. If you add just a tiny bit during the three, it's okay, but um, you're really trying to propagate these microbes versus giving them a home. Adding it into the four stage, you're going to allow the microbes to really colonize that. That's when you're mixing in with the soil. You're going to get even better results. Does it matter if it's charged or uncharged? Um, to a degree, um, it, you can you can mess with that. I I typically almost always use fresh biochar when I'm doing it. Um, because the microbes themselves are charging it. And if I add too many nutrients during that phase, I'm going to kind of mess up how my microbes are growing. Really remember that during the IMO 3, 1 through 4, you're really focused on the microbes. 
at five is when you're interested in more of this nutrition. And and all those names, one, two, three, four, five, I find to be extremely confusing. So I call IMO one seed IMO. IMO two is also the preserved seed IMO. Three, you're doing an activation step. Or excuse me, three, three, you're propagating these microbes up a whole bunch. Four, you're activating them to your soil. And five would be a fermented mixed compost. So even for myself, it's kind of confusing. All these numbers, all these numbers, all these acronyms. Um, it can be one of the struggling points with KNF. So just trying to think of it this way, that when you're building a compost IMO, which is what the Cho will call IMO5 in addition to other things, that's when you're going to want to add in biochar and have it matter. Um, so next kind of question here, how much time, if any, does the IMO pile need to rest before continuing the process? Um, the IMO pile just needs to cool down. It just needs to finish its stage to go on to the next stage. You don't need to let it rest. Um, so for me, my piles take between seven to 10 days. You can immediately go to your next stage as soon as it's starting to cool down. Um, and that's what you said you you do, um, and, and that you're exactly right here. Um, and then the last little bit of this is how raw or fresh can manure be for IMO5? Um, I use horse manure from a local stable that mixes their manure with fine wood shavings. By the time I use the manure, it has broken down quite a bit. In your opinion, which is more optimal? Um, I, you know... You, that manure, as it sounds, is fine. You're just wanting to get the nitrogen factor out of it. Um, you know, just, and since it's mixed with wood chips, it's already the carbon nitrogen, so it's already starting to ferment. One thing to be careful on getting um, manures from uh, stables is sometimes they use a lot of dewormers. So be careful they're not deworming and killing your nematodes off. Um, you know, so it's best to let it ferment a little bit, let it compost. It's probably better that it's it's waiting a little bit. Um, the horse manure is great to use uh, somewhat, f you know, fresh as you can. Um, you don't want it to be wet with too much moisture content in there, but it sounds like what you're doing is great. So um, thanks, Michael, for, for these questions. Hope this helps you out, Hamud. I'm going to post this to the Facebook. Hope all you guys saw this. Um, and if you enjoy it, uh, check out the office hours. I'll get be back Sunday, um, my usual time, 9 a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. And uh, yeah, hope hope to help you guys out and uh, continue to help all of us with natural farming. So aloha.